Well, oh, oh, I love gravy. This I know. Gravies and know, sauces. I and I'm doing a couple of nice sauces. Hi, everybody. I'm Laban Johnson. I'm Larry Bly, and we're going to do gravies and sauces today. You know, we, we are doing a, a few shows along here. For those of you that are not great cooks. Part or of the just, cooking. Yeah, <laughs> just starting out uh, for young uh, children and uh, college students and people that haven't cooked for a long time or rich people down on their luck or whatever. <laughs> Who are forced into right. the kitchen after 27 years. Oh, uh, it's terrible. Now that Yves is gone right. and, rest up and all that crowd. <laughs> so anyway, this should be some good practical experience for you. A lot of people don't know how to make either, neither sauces nor gravies. gravies. Yeah, because we know we've been to their house. All right. <laughs> well, here's some letters that have come in. Oh, letters! I love. Yeah, them. this is from Ms. Can you read? Is that Alice D. Hamilton or I can't read her writing there. I think that's anyway. Sly she's, Hamilton. Sly Hamilton. Like or, or, I look forward to seeing your show every day at 4 p.m. on Channel 57 here in Colonial Heights, Virginia. Hey. Where are you? I'm not interested in carving uh, duck decoys at all, but I do enjoy your humor, fellowship, and recipes. Please come back on and get rid of the carvers and painters. <laughs> and so she asked for a recipe. Just wonderful. There recipe. are a lot of carvers and painters on right. public television. I have to well, admit that. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. From, and she lives on Roanoke Avenue. Yeah, how about that, isn't Colonial that? And Hunt. here we are coming from Roanoke, Virginia. Well, we love fan mail. And we got yes, lots we of do. them. we do. Lots of wonderful letters. Oh, you have another one. Yeah, and this was addressed to our program manager. Oh. Uh, and it's from Mrs. M. Fine of, of uh, United Court in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond. So Mrs. Fine wrote this, uh. to whom it may concern, I cannot believe that your show is for real. Those two clowns step on each other's lines. I mean, they talk even if the other is speaking. Today, on Channel 29, 4 p.m. in Richmond, they read a letter from a viewer from Rocky Mount. They had the nerve to make fun of the person's spelling. They both act so stupid and silly, and they talk like two low-grade morons. Don't they watch each other's uh, other cooking shows and see how grown cooks conduct themselves? They should. Oh well, I guess I'll listen to the radio instead of watching TV from 4 to 4.30 p.m. while they are on. From an ex-viewer, Mrs. Fine in Richmond, Virginia. P.S. Do you ever watch them? Well, Mrs. Fine, <laughs> yes, he does watch them. Thank you show. for the wonderful sweet and, letter, Mrs. Fine. Right, and we would encourage you to turn your television set off and never watch this show again because, frankly, we don't want people to watch this show <laughs> if they don't busy. have a sense of humor. That's right. And uh, we have added you to our prayer list because anybody is as full of Venom. unpleasantness yes. as this, Mm -mm. We're real sorry for it. We hate to put you through the misery, darling. We sure do. That's Bye. the word. Okay, well, hey, listen. Let's go to the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not a fake letter. <laughs> okay. It also wasn't the only one of those we've ever gotten. But anyway, we don't get very many of them. Well, blah. what have you got? Oh, I'm, I'm frying things in anticipation of some gravy I'm going to make in a couple of minutes. You know, I'll, and I'll just start out by saying this, and then I'll let you okay. get into whatever it is you want to do there. Basically, in my household, and I guess in most of them, who, especially country households, there are three types of gravies. There is a water-based gravy, there is a stock-based uh, gravy, and there is a milk-based gravy, right. which makes a white gravy. And so today we're going to do a milk gravy, and we're going to do a stock gravy. And I could do water uh, base gravy out of either one of these if I wanted to and I'll give you a few tips on how to keep your gravy from getting lumpy because a lot of people can't take the lumps. Right and I'm doing a couple of sauces. I'm doing a simple cream sauce that you can use with chicken or turkey or beef to make a roast beef hash. What is and the I'm difference? I'm also going to do, uh, I'll tell you in a sec, oh, uh, right. I'm also going to do a Newberg sauce which has the base of a cream sauce that you can use over fish or shrimp or anything like that. And for that, I've got a, my double boiler back this week with a stick of margarine, and I'm going to add about a tablespoon of chopped shallots to it, or you could use onions if you wanted to, but shallots are nicer. Is that a and the difference to a between the sauce shallot? and the gravy? Oh, yeah, yes. yes. Uh -huh. All right, go ahead. You, you say the difference between a sauce and a gravy, is yep. that what you said? Yes. Is that what I heard you ask? Yes. Well, I don't know that there is much. <laughs> well, I, I guess the sauces are. Uh, 
go on something rather than being, or you cook uh, something else in it, rather, and a gravy is served on the side, maybe. Also, I don't think I've ever seen too many gravies, unless it's a really uptown gravy that has wine in it, or sherry, right. or something like that. So, gravy is a little more of a common man sauce, right. I would believe. So, uh, I, I've case. just started this, and I'm going to let these things cook over here, Bly, while you uh, go on and show them what you're doing, and then we'll come back. Well, what I'm doing right now is I have just fried... Now, today's recipe, uh, recipe we're going to bring up uh, has uh, giblets. And, uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, giblets. What's a giblet? Giblets. Those are excess parts from those birds that don't oh, fly anymore. you mean the guts? Oh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, but anyway. Well, I would. Instead of giblets, however. Oh, those livers look so good. Could I have a, oh, a you small certainly can. crusty one? Because. There's one right there that's got my name on it. I hope it isn't Oh, it does. Heart. It's Laban Johnson right there. Mm -hmm. No, I don't mm -hmm. think so. I hope not. Was it? Woo, no, it's good though. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of giblets, which I don't particularly care for, and which were not readily available yesterday, uh, I have brought in some, some liver, chicken livers, and I've just fried those things, and according to Mr. Johnson's carrying on, I must have fried them pretty well. They're real good. We fried them while we were over there talking and while we were preparing for the program. What I'm doing is I'm going to cut up some of them just real fine, and I already have some stuff that's left over in the pan from where I fried them. And we're going to make our gravy in the same pan that we fried these in. I'm going to put some of these back in there in a couple of minutes. And we'll get the, the essence, the flavor uh, of this. I'm going to stick them back in there and fry them real quick just for a couple of minutes. Just to, and I'm going to put some flour in there with them too. And we're going to make our, our basic roux, which is your base for a... Your roux of the day. <laughs> which is the base for our gravy. We're going to take those and put them back in here. And this is, this is still hot. They'll dry in there just a little bit. And I'm going to add just a little, tiny little bit of oil, not too much. You don't really need enough. Just a little bit of oil to that. And I'm going to bring that up fairly hot, real fast. And in there with those, I'm going to take a little flour. And I'm going to sprinkle that in there. And we're going to brown that for just a couple of minutes. Work that around until it gets brown. In fact, I think I'll put just a little bit more in. You don't want to use up all your liquids. Mm -mm -mm, that looks good. Now, everybody look at that. Look how his flour is bubbling in there. It's that's bubbling around. That I'm makes sure it. you're cooking the flour. That's right. And you got to cook it real good and get it nice and brown. And this what will, happens if you don't cook the flour? Blind? It will taste like flour when you, uh, when right. you use it. So and that's real important in anything we're doing today. When you're adding flour to something, make sure you cook it. And as a matter of fact, I've been in some pretty fine restaurants that had gravy that was... You know, the biggest thing about gravies in restaurants, I find, that even some of the finer restaurants where they prepare everything, they buy that store-bought gravy. Mm -hmm. And I can taste it every time because it has certain herbs in it, mm -hmm. and I, I can just taste it immediately. And I don't know why they do that, because it's so simple to make up a nice gravy. I guess maybe they run out of time, or what have you. And I've also been to some mighty fine people's homes where they, they serve gravy that was real lumpy, or that tasted like, like flour. So you gotta give this just a little bit of time. Now you will notice, now while I'm doing that, I'm gonna open up just some ordinary clear chicken stock. Well, I got a couple of seconds here while that's browning. Give it lots of time to okay. brown, but bring your bring your heat up so that it's real hot. I'm now on high. Well, yeah. Bly, while you're doing that, I'm, right. I, let me start over here with this thing. I've got uh, two tablespoons of margarine in this little frying pan, and it's melted, and I'm now going to add two tablespoons of flour to it. That was a little bit too rounded, so I'll make the next one a scant. Okay. Flour and butter, or margarine. We always say butter, but we mean margarine, and we always use margarine. That's right. And I'm just going to do the same thing Larry is doing over there, and look, it looks very much the same, except it doesn't have the, the color that Larry's does. And that's good, because this is going to be a white sauce. And 
shouldn't be real brown or anything. But I've got this flour in here stirring around really good now. And you can make any quantity you want as long as you remember that it's two tablespoons of margarine, two of flour, and a cup of liquid. Two, two and a cup. And you can just, uh, using your pocket calculator, figure out any other uh, amount that you want to do. I need to cut this All right. down. Okay, now we've gone a good while on this, and this has gotten nice and brown, very, very brown inside. And now what we're going to do, and it's red hot, and look how brown that is. Isn't that nice? Now what we're going to do, you've already got your thickening in there. We've been, we've been, thickening, it, we've been thickening it while we were putting our... our we're uh, thickened to death. We're thickened to death. Now we're going to put some stock in there. As you can see, it's hot and bubbly, and stir it around a little bit. Oh, this is going to be real nice. And you kind of want to, at this point, you want to add some uh, salt and pepper to it. And that's something you kind of have to do by taste. And back where I come from, they physically take their fingers and stick it down. <laughs> we won't do that because that woman will get going again. But I know people that can do that while the stuff is boiling. They just take a little of it and take their finger in there and smack a little of that out. And they get by. Now, you see, we're bringing that to a real fast boil. Don't be afraid to boil it. And it is starting to thicken. It's mm -hmm. starting to look real. Now, Larry, right. mine is foaming over here the same way yours is. And when it foams, you know you're beginning to get ready that you want to start adding your milk to it. And here's my milk, and I'm going to add a little milk in mine, just a little bit to start out with. And stir this around real good. This gravy is going to be pretty and brown. Should, now, be quite, should be quite delightful. And here's my cream sauce. Is, yeah, I'm going to add a little more milk because it's thickening up so fast. Mm. How is it? Is it good? Yeah, and I'm going to add the rest of my stock at this point. I've got it as thick as I want it, and I want to add a little bit more stock. The remainder of it, as a matter of fact. It's a nice brown, pretty gravy. And we'll get it boiling again, and that should do it then. There should be enough of that to, you gotta kinda taste it as you go along to see if you need any more salt and pepper. Mm. Tad bit on the salty side, but it'll be all right. All right. Did I you hear someone talking? Yeah, it sounds I like thought this. somebody was <laughs> was carrying on another conversation. In here. All right, now here is my basic cream sauce layer. Oh, it's beautiful. And I'm going to add a little flavor to it. And I think what I'm going to do for this, I have just a few little onions, and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of onion down in there and let that cook a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of sherry to it. Oh, sherry, sherry baby. If I can get the top, of, this is the same problem I had last week. I can't get the cover off the sherry. There it is. Oh, we're working up some fine gravies here today. And I'm, I'm just going to put a little dash of sherry in there, in that sauce. And a little tad of nutmeg. Excuse me, I got too much just pepper. Just a few sprinkles of nutmeg. Whew. And that's a fine cream sauce that you could use on leftover chicken or, or turkey or even fish to serve the next day. And I'll turn that down because that's all finished now, believe it or not. Look at that. Oh, so it's beautiful. It smells really marvelous gorgeous. too. So there is our cream sauce. All pretty. Now we'll come back over to this while you continue on there to my Newberg sauce. Are you doing something? No, you go ahead. Oh, 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 okay. Excuse me, I drifted off there for a minute. Now, here's what I have done. I have taken some, some fine Valleydale bacon, and I have uh, been frying that stuff up, and I've taken it off. I'm gonna be using the bacon a little bit later on for something else that has nothing to do with this program. And uh, what I have here is I have, the, uh, I have what was rendered from it, and I've been heating that up. And I'm gonna get that real hot, 
and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mix I'm going to pre-mix this a little bit. And here's the secret to to sort of getting the lumps out of gravy when you're going to have a milk-based gravy. Pre-mix it a little bit in a bowl off to the side, and just mix it up before you put it in there. Because once you put it in there, you'll never get it under control. You know, a lot of people prefer to make up gravy lumpy and then strain it out, but that's mm -hmm. kind of unfair. Oh, sure. That's now, not the best way to do it. while you're doing that, I'm going to separate three eggs over here, and I'm using uh, this lovely egg separator that was given to us by Miss Sherry. By the way, this gravy, if I'm just going to, while you're separating those, this gravy is now gravy. It is beautiful and brown and just as wonderful as can be. It really is nice and thick and it's got a gorgeous, gorgeous brown cast to it. It is now thickened up total. Look at that. Isn't that nice? It's beautiful gravy. It's nice and thick. You can tell how thick it is because when you pull the spoon through it, it separates and stays that way for a while. That's when you got a perfect gravy right, right there. Right consistency to serve on the table and it'll continue to thicken a little bit even after you pull it off. So anyway, oh. all right, what, you still separating I'm eggs? I'm still separating this, these eggs because you only need the yolks for this recipe. Yeah. And there we go. We have right smart egg white. Now that could be saved and used for something else like a meringue if somebody wanted to do a meringue. All right, now I have got in this bowl three egg yolks and I'm going to add a cup of cream. Let me get my measuring cup here. This is half and half. And I'll put that down in with the egg yolks. And I'm going to This is not the best bowl for a whisk, but uh, it'll do. How's yours doing over well, there? Well, I'm making the bacon gravy right now. If you take a look at that, this is a this is a white gravy. Like he was making a white sauce a while ago, this is a white gravy, which was made with, with milk. And look at that, it's getting real mm -hmm. thick. Mm -hmm. And that is made from the actual, you know, from the actual oh, juice. Oh boy, that is pretty. Look at that. And that's, that's right ready to go on biscuits right now. If you had some, if you had some uh, biscuits, you just pour that, look how thick that is. That's real nice. Now that's, uh, here's, let me show you the difference between the two gravies and put them side by side. This is a white gravy, which is made with milk. And this is a, a, a brown gravy which is made with stock, and you could also make either one of these using water instead of uh, instead of milk or stock. Okay. And I'm going to cut that off and take your time and have a good time. All right, that's all now, I got I've to got do. my stick of uh, margarine and my shallots in there, and I'm adding this cup of cream and three egg yolks to it, and it's in a double boiler over boiling hot water, and that's going to cook until it is thick. And when it's thick, we're going to add a little brandy and some tomato paste. Bly, let me have the can opener, if you would. The can opener. The opener. The can. What are you drinking? Mineral oil? Oh, I'm drinking water. Oh. There I were know. no soft drinks in this place today. A lot of people will be shocked, but I'm drinking water. Well, I went, I it's did. I went back in there to get a... By yeah. the way, I have saved some of these fine livers to uh, oh, put good. our gravy over top of because oh, I marvelous. thought that'd be real nice. I'm going to take those to the table right now, and we'll we'll use those a little bit. Well, we have two fine gravies ready yeah, to roll this here. Just sticking up on me here. And by the way, don't forget now you can if you'll pre-mix your milk and 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 your thickener, whatever it is, I'm using flour today, prior to pouring it into the hot pan, you won't have all those lumps. This is a nice, very, it has no lumps in it whatsoever. It's, it's, it's real fine. And it's, it's cheating if you make something up in advance and, and sieve it out. And besides, with, with a gravy this thick, you couldn't sieve it anyway if you wanted to. Okay, well I'm still working on this, waiting for it to, to get hot and creamy here, which it will in just a few minutes. Oh, let me have a piece of this. Mm, mm, mm. Looks good. While we're doing this, why don't we look at the recipe? Oh, yeah. Show them how old this is done. Now, you'll find that I have done a few, 
a few variations on the theme today, but we took some pan juices, which were made from, uh, in this case, which were made from uh, livers, chicken livers, and a little flour. You'll notice I didn't measure it out. I just kind of played it by air, but one to two tablespoons is actually what it calls for. And you can, use any, you can use any of these, either milk or water or stock or beer or cream or wine. You can, yes, you can actually make gravy from wine. In this case, we used uh, stock. I, I put in some chicken stock. A little salt and pepper to taste. It also calls for herbs. I didn't use any today because I'm not, I'm not you familiar. You couldn't find herb. I couldn't <laughs> find herb. I think he was at Burger King. The uh, giblet gravy, well, that's actually what I just explained to you. But anyway, you know, you do the same thing. Uh, except today I did a variation on both of those and took a little bit of bacon uh, rendering and, and used that. Mm -hmm. And now for you the... You can get real fancy and put in onions and celery and carrots, just like it says there. All right. For the white sauce, two tablespoons of margarine, two of flour, and a cup of milk. And you cook the flour in the margarine and add the milk, and you've got a wonderful... Uh, white sauce and you can use grated onion, sherry, nutmeg, or chives, uh, any or some of those in combination uh, for your cream sauce. Your Newberg sauce is a half cup of margin, a teaspoon of chopped shallots, a quarter cup of sherry or Madeira, add some Madeira my dear, a cup of cream, three egg yolks, a tablespoon of tomato paste, and a tablespoon of brandy when it gets uh, nice and thick. And there we go. I'm trying to find mine. something to set all this on. And my sauce is now getting nice and creamy, just beautiful in here. Look at this blind. This is gorgeous. I'm going to put down a few pads because we have a lot of real hot. You know, I, I'm going to need a large spoon to spoon this over the... Right here. You can use okay. that because I'm not going to pour these okay. out into anything. All right, now my sauce is nice and thick, and I'm going to add a tablespoon of tomato paste to it. I think really that's supposed to be a teaspoon. <laughs> How embarrassing. Well, you know, what can you do? Wouldn't be the first time. And, um, but I'm sure it's a, a, a tablespoon of brandy. <laughs> and we know how to measure a tablespoon of that. All right. We've got a letter, I think, today, Miss Witch was talking about. We have not heard from the Cook Sisters. The, you know, they are being held by rebel uh, fighters in Af in Iceland. I was going to say Afghanistan. I believe she's cleared for takeoff already. Here we so, go. Read that letter and see what it says while I'm watching this sauce. All right. It says, uh, Dear guys, we're glad to hear you're showing the culinary handicapped how to cook. Me and the other, is that brothers? In our frat house, uh -huh. know how to bake a potato, but how do you do those fancy stuffed ones? One of the girls from Delta New, I believe that is, mm -hmm. told one of the pledges to stuff it, and now he wants to. <laughs> uh, Bozo Bob, or what is it? B uh, uh, Brother Bob. Brother Bob. Brother Bob, Gamma uh, Gamma Ray. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, it's a great fraternity. Well, it just so happens that on next week's program, we are going to take uh, potatoes and show you some little fancy stuffing mm -hmm. methods of them and what happens. Well, let's go over to And the what table. is it you're going to do? Uh, oh, I think I'll fry some potatoes next week. All right, let me, let's see, let me bring these a, hot things along. Will you, let me uh, pour myself some milk here to drink. He's drinking milk now. You saw it here. I hope we got it on tape. Here, have some of these oh, I'd love chicken to. livers, and we'll we'll put oh well, how embarrassing they went flying across the room, and we'll put some of this fine gravy over top of it. All this gravy came out to perfection, and so did the sauces. I'm happy to say we're practicing what we preach today. As you can see, it's nice and thick, quite delicious. Mm -hmm. And some of this bacon gravy, we'll oh, give I'll that a little. Some. Here, just a little try. help yourself out of this. I didn't bring a serving spoon over. Neither did I. I'm just, this stuff is thick enough that you can scoop it with a whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we'll give this a try with this sauce. This sauce is gorgeous looking. And gorgeous tasting too. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Ooh wee. Sauces and gravies, wonderful. Mmm, heavenly. I'll try this bacon gravy. Oh, you know that'd be good over biscuits? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm telling you, it's wonderful. It sticks to your ribs. And, and to your clothes. <laughs> Let me, <laughs> just joking, but anyway. Mm. And the Newberg sauce over these Everything. little locusts. Everything, oh, it's wonderful. Excellent. It really is. Oh, we've had an awfully tasty day today. Mm -hmm. I just wish Ms. Fine was here to taste it with us. A little on the heavy and a little heavy on the gravies and sauces, but anyway, thanks for coming. See by. you next week. If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.